A lot of people, when they're first learning this kick, they pull their leg back and push it out, okay? It's just like if I'm gonna punch someone, I pull my hand back and then punch, right? Don't do that, okay? It's a telegraph. Your opponent sees you pulling back and they know you're gonna attack, okay? I need you to be able to attack to kick right from wherever your body is, where my hands are, where my feet are, wherever my feet are, they need to be able to kick and strike wherever they are. The purpose of our organization is to start right here in Harlem, which has the largest concentration of people of African descent that exists anywhere on this earth. There are more Africans here in Harlem than exist in any city on the African continent, because that's what you and I are, Africans. This is Ijikari, African martial arts, the art of trapping, where we study African martial arts, history, and culture as a means to restore our black cultural identity before slavery and colonialism, as well as to build a foundation that will continue to grow for generations to come. In this lesson, you're going to learn the purpose and function of the straight kick. It's going to be our first kick that we're learning. You're going to learn all about it, how to throw it four different ways. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right into this, okay? So again, we're training on the straight kick, okay? This is the first kick, first really strike that we're learning in, um, in our curriculum as we uh, develop, right? As we go along, again, we're building from the ground up. So we're starting with kicks and we're gonna work our way into punching and knocking, okay? Now, I make this reference here to knocking and kicking. So when African martial arts came over to North America, okay, it came over in many different forms, right? From in different regions uh, in Africa, mostly West and Central Africa. But it evolved and eventually became known as knocking and kicking because kicking was really always a part of African martial arts, okay? As well as your, your defensive and evasive maneuvers, right? From Angolo and what eventually became Capoeira, right? Uh, and then knocking really denotes your headbutts, okay? Primarily headbutting, but it could be any kind of, you know, blunt strikes uh, with eventually fists were, were used as well, right? But um, initially this was known more so focused on the headbutts, okay? So I do make a note here to reference knocking and kicking so you guys know historically, from a historical perspective, uh, where this comes from and what we're talking about, okay? So in terms of what we're going to cover today, um, again, we're just going to cover one kick, the straight kick. We got four different directions that we're covering this from, uh, four different angles, essentially. But I want to start with just going over some basic fundamentals, some basic concepts here in terms of the striking surface and well as the foot angle, okay? So typically, when you think of a straight kick, you're thinking of a kick that, again, is going on a straight line, okay? That's what we're talking about as opposed to, again, a curve kick, right? So we have two kicks, right? We have straight kick, which goes directly forward, and we have curve kicks, right, which go more, uh, they're circular, right? Go on a, a circular or curved line, okay? So when we talk about a straight kick, okay, you have different, uh, starting with foot angles, okay? So for example, if I'm throwing a straight kick, right? So in some martial arts, it's called a push kick or a front kick or a teat, right? In Muay Thai, it's very similar technique, okay? But in Ijikati and what we do, um, we, we, you know, it's, it's, it's different, right? So let me explain this a little bit, okay? So I have foot angles, right? Meaning that I can throw the front kick here, okay? directly towards you and my foot can be center, okay? I can move my foot to the left and I can move it to the right, okay? Very obvious, very basic stuff, right? But those are important ways to understand how you throw your kick, right? So a lot of times if I'm throwing a front kick to the body, I might have my foot centered, right? But if I'm throwing it to the knee or to the leg, I might angle the foot, right? To better align with my opponent's knee, his thigh, because otherwise if I throw it to his leg and my foot is centered and straight, it's very easy to slide off, right? Because it's very narrow. His leg is very narrow, it's very easy to slide off. And if I slide off, now I'm getting hit, okay? All right, so you will angle your foot depending on the surface uh, that you're striking, the target area, okay? So very important to understand that you can angle your foot depending on uh, what you're trying to do, okay? So just keep that in mind as we continue, right? Now. Moving on, you do have different striking surfaces, right? So again, going back to the example, I'm just covering the front kick uh, initially, okay? Front kick meaning I'm kicking directly front, right? It's a straight kick, but it's going front right in front of me, okay? So, you know, again, different foot angles, but I also have different striking surfaces, right? So for example, I can attack with the ball of the foot, right? I can angle the ball of my foot to attack. I can hit with the heel, right? Hit with the heel. I can hit with the flat of my foot, right? Just the flat of my foot. And then I can also hit with the blade of my foot, which is more the side of the foot, okay? And you're gonna use those four different striking surfaces for four different functions, okay? So for example, the blade of my foot or side of my foot, I might use this more as a, as a flick, right? Like kind of a flicker jab, but I'm using with my leg, right? So I'm not trying to do a lot of damage this way, okay? Because again, you're hitting with the blade of your foot, your ankle 
right? It's kind of tilted sideways. So it's almost like trying to walk on your feet sideways, right? It's not, it's not a good way to walk, right? It doesn't feel good, okay? So same thing, you're not gonna hit with power doing this, okay? But it, it's, it still hurts, right? It still stings a little bit. And it's a very quick way to get that, that front kick out and hit with the um, blade of your foot, okay? Uh, another very popular way, right, is the ball of the foot, right? The ball of the foot gives me more distance, right? Makes my foot a little bit longer, gives me more distance, I can reach my target, okay? And that's really good for pushing, right? Pushing my target away, I can hit right to the belly button, to the groin, to the sternum. I like to hit right in the bladder, okay? That's a great shot, right, in, in terms of self-defense, okay? Now, a real quick note here, as I'm demonstrating these kicks, guys, I'm keeping my hands down just so you can kind of focus on the kick, but obviously when you're kicking, please keep your hands up either in your um, spear or in a shield defensive position posture. Sometimes I actually put a hand in the face in order to set up my kicks, okay? So just keep that in mind. You will have your hands up as you do these kicks, right? So the next one is the heel, right? I might strike with the heel because the heel is really the hardest part of your foot, okay? So this is what you wanna do when you wanna do some damage, right? It's a little bit shorter than using the ball of my foot, but I really wanna do some damage. I'm hitting with the heel, okay? And really wanna hurt them, right? Um, and then finally, I might hit with just my whole foot, right? The flat of the foot here, okay? And I'm using the flat of the foot really, um, well, I use it mostly going down to the legs, right? Because again, I don't wanna try, try to hit with my heel. It's very small, narrow, like a ball. Heel's gonna fall off, okay? or slide off the leg rather, right? So a lot of times I'm using the flat of my foot because I want to deliver more of my body weight into the attack, into the strike, or I want to make sure that I hit the target, right? So I don't want to isolate a small part of my foot. Instead, I'm trying to hit with my whole foot. And even if I miss, maybe I hit my heel or maybe I hit the ball of my foot, okay? So, but I'm using my whole foot um, just to have a better chance of striking, okay? Also, when you walk, right, you're walking with your whole foot. Your whole foot is on the floor, okay? So that's the best way to transfer the most body weight into your, your kicks, okay? But that's especially how you want to kick towards the, the legs, right? The shin, the knee, as we foot stomp down on the knee. That's what you want to use the whole foot, okay? So those are your different striking surfaces, okay? Now, in terms of the, the purpose of the front kick, okay? Or the straight kick, rather, okay? It could be front, side, and different angles, okay? The general purpose of this kick is to really to keep your opponent at distance and also do damage, right? Obviously, you want to stop your attacker from, from you know, coming forward and attacking you, but the straight kick is a great way to do that because this creates a barrier between me and my opponent, right? So in order for him to attack me, he has to get through my leg, right? And his leg is straight, right? So it's harder for him to push through and come closer to me. So this is really a keep out move, okay? But it also is meant to deal damage and hurt him, right? And keep him at distance. And it's also the longest kick that I have, right? So that's the idea is to keep my opponent at distance and also do damage. That's typically why we use uh, straight kicks, okay? So your side kick here is nice and long, extends the hips, okay? Nice and long here, it a, does a good job of keeping your opponent at distance. The drawback to kicks, okay, generally, is that you're on one foot, right? So that means you can't use your footwork, you can't move, right? So if somehow he pushes through my kick, I can't move at all until I put this foot down. Then I can start moving and circling, right? So temporarily, as you kick, you are a sitting target here, okay? So you gotta be careful when you use kicks, use them wisely, use them effectively, right? Um, but you gotta set them up, okay? And I'm not saying don't use kicks, please use kicks. They're very, very effective, but it's just important to understand the weaknesses in all your, your techniques, okay? And that's one of the weaknesses in kicks is that it doesn't allow you to use your, your footwork, okay? If somebody's really crashing forward and pushing in on you, okay? And also, right, your legs off the ground so some opponents can grab your leg, right, and try to take you down. So you wanna be careful with things like that and make sure that you recover the kick very effectively, right? Cover the kick very well, okay? Um, so that's kind of the purpose of the straight kick, okay? As we cover the mechanics, right? Um, first thing I like to talk about is really just your footwork, okay? Now we covered footwork in the previous lesson, okay? And I'm just gonna review this real quick, okay? Generally with your footwork and your straight kicks, okay? You wanna, um, particularly if you're kicking with your front leg, right, the leg that's in front. When I kick with my front leg, right, and my target's you know, here, you know, in order for me to kick my front leg, I have to put my weight on my back leg, right? But what happens when I put my weight on my back leg? That sends me further away from the target and now I'm out of reach. I can't reach the target, okay? So we use footwork, especially from the front leg, okay, in order to kick with the front leg. Now for my back leg, right, I can reach the target just fine, right? Typically, you can reach the target just fine, okay? Even if I take a step back, I can still reach my target, okay? So the back leg's a little bit easier, okay, because your front leg's already there and it can, 
you can easily transfer your weight, but kicking with my front leg, I'm too far away, okay? So we're using footwork, okay? So the first footwork we use is the kind of the sweep step, right? Where we're sweeping our back leg up and pulling ourselves in, okay? So our hips are pulling ourselves in, and I'm trying, my, my goal is really to kick uh, with the momentum of the sweep, okay? In other words, I don't wanna sweep, bring my leg up and then kick. I wanna use the momentum of my weight going forward to throw that kick, okay? momentum so you want to get your kick into the target as soon as possible it's almost like your feet are racing okay my kicking foot is racing my standing foot okay to see which one can get to their destination first okay i want my kicking foot to get there first but uh, you know physically right because we use physics and science and african martial arts the distance between my foot and the target is further away than from my standing foot to where it needs to go okay so naturally my standing foot will get there first okay because the distance is shorter right but I still, I don't wanna do this and then try to kick because I just lost all my momentum and my body weight and I'm just kicking with my leg now, which makes that much less effective, okay? So you wanna make sure you pull your whole weight going forward and sweeping, boom, into the kick right there, okay? So that's our sweep step, right? Um, and you can do different angles and, and you know circular. We're doing it straight right now, but you can circle and curve with this as well, okay? Now, uh, moving on, we have the uh, your cross step, okay? So cross is just what we're talking about, it's just crossing, right? Coming at an angle, stepping out to an angle. Again, it can be the, the, uh, the side kick, the side front kick, or still, oh, sorry, sorry, side uh, straight kick, okay? Still a straight kick, okay? Or it can, I can step out and then make it a front kick or any of the variations that we're gonna cover here shortly, okay? But you're just stepping out, okay? I can go um, to, the, towards my back leg or I can go towards my front leg and step out, okay? And come here with the cross step, all right? So that's what we're doing with that with that footwork. I'm just cutting an angle and boom, there's the kick, okay? Glide step, okay? Very similar um, to the uh, sweep step, except we're kicking first, okay? We're kicking and our kicking foot is pulling our standing foot in, okay? So it's a little bit different, okay? I'm pulling myself in and striking here, okay? So it's a little bit less, um, it's not as strong as the sweep step, but the glide step is nice because it's faster, okay? It just immediately pulls you in. So if you just wanna touch your target, that's a great way to do it. It works very well. It works best really with, the, with the side version of the straight kick, right? The side kick, okay? And I'm gonna call it the side kick just for simplicity, right? But we understand it's just one kick. Uh, we're just giving it four different directions, uh, four different names. Um, so that's kind of your, uh, your basic footwork. Okay. You also have here your switch step and your, your walk run. Okay. The switch you can do here, just switching. Okay. Essentially I'm taking my back foot, sending it back. My front, my, uh, um, sorry, my front foot comes back. My back foot comes front. My feet are fairly close. I'm essentially shuffling my feet and then kicking with the front leg. Okay. So it's just a quick shuffle and kick. Okay. Again, shuffle and kick. Okay. And then again, go back, watch the previous lesson on that. And then the last one, of course, just walking up, right? Just stepping and boom, coming right into the kick, okay? This can either be one of your half steps, okay? I can half step and kick, or I can literally just walk or run and approach my opponent and kick him that way as well, okay? So um, either of those are just great ways to execute your kicks, particularly off the front leg. Your back leg, like I say, you're already closer to your target, okay? So it's a little bit easier typically, but you can still half step towards your target here. Um, or do any other kind of uh, stepping, right? Stepping forward or cross stepping and coming in with your kicks. That's fine too. If you need to close that distance, close that gap, and obviously try to uh, set up your kicks, right? With your hands, ideally, okay? Especially your slower kicks, your stronger kicks, set those up with your hands and especially your rear or back leg kicks, set those up with your hands, okay? Now with our kicks, we're gonna talk about the functions uh, in terms of the mechanics, okay? So that's kind of basics of the footwork. So let's say we're going back to our, our, our straight kick, which comes to the front, okay? Here, right? One of the, the key elements is as you execute this kick, right? This footwork aside, okay? Is I want you to bring your leg up right from where your, your knee is, okay? A lot of people, when they're first learning this kick, they pull their leg back and push it out, okay? It's just like if I'm gonna punch someone, I pull my hand back and then punch, right? Don't do that, okay? It's a telegraph. Your opponent sees you pulling back and they know you're gonna attack, okay? I need you to be able to attack, to kick right from wherever your body is, where my hands are, where my feet are, wherever my feet are, they need to be able to kick and strike wherever they are, okay? You shouldn't have to pull them back, get into a set posture first, you should already be there, okay? Uh, regardless, right? That's why we're always moving and using our Jenga, right? Because we've got to be able to attack from wherever we are. We don't have a static posture, okay? Or, or a fighting stance, right? So, um, so that's very important, right? So I want you to be able to kick, just keep that same bend 
in your knee, wherever you happen to be, okay? And again, this is gonna go straight up and boom in towards the target, okay? Now, the key element to this, and I labeled it here on the board, is using the hips, right? So as I come up, keeping that same bend in my knee, I'm extending my hips, okay? Sending my hips forward, which naturally sends my shoulders back a little bit, okay? You know, to balance myself, sending this back, I'm keeping my hands up, right? So I'm in my spear or shield, whatever I need to be. A lot of times here, especially when I'm going backwards with my shoulders, I'm keeping my hands closer forward, right? This not just helps with your balance, but it also helps you deflect any attacks that are coming. If I'm very much in a protective shield here, okay, and I get hit, I'm usually gonna be falling backwards, right? Because there's nothing to take the heat off of those attacks, okay? So a lot of times I keep my hands a little bit more extended to keep more barriers at different distances, right? I got a front barrier and a rear barrier here, okay? Before he gets to my head or shoulders or anything like that, okay? So I want you to extend your hips into the kick, right? Push into the kick and keep a slight bend in your standing leg as well, okay? Slight bend in your standing leg and just sending the hips forward, right? Whether you're kicking with the blade of the foot, you're kicking with the ball of the foot, the heel, right? The flat of the foot, whatever you're doing, use that, use the hips, okay? Drive power, okay? Now, that's the full version. Obviously, if you're just throwing like a flicker, okay? You can just you can just bring the foot up, okay? And you can do that too without throwing much of your hip into it, right? It's not gonna do a lot of damage, and that's fine. Sometimes you just wanna put something in your opponent's face so you can set up uh, your stronger weapons, your stronger attacks, okay? Uh, and that's fine, right? You might just wanna just give them a soft kick here in the shin, boom, right? Not using much hip right there, okay? But I might give them a soft uh, kick right here just with my legs, okay? Straight kick going down, a foot stomp, and then set up my attacks, okay? So you don't always have to use the hip, but if you're not using a hip, it's important you understand why, okay? That makes your attacks a little bit faster, but they're gonna be not as uh, powerful. So you may wanna use that just as a setup. But if you're trying to deal damage, uh, go ahead and use the hip. Now, the other piece to this is our recovery, okay? A lot of times when students are first learning, just like when they're learning how to punch, they throw their punch, right? And then they drop their hand, okay? It's the same thing when you do your kicks, right? If I throw my kick, Okay, and I just let my foot fall, right? I don't wanna do that, right? So it's important that you recover the kicks effectively, right? So if we're using, say, our uh, sweeping step, right? As we pull in and sweep the leg in here, okay? I can also sweep it back, right? In terms of recovering the kick and coming right back into this position, ready to roll, okay? So it's important you think about how you wanna recover your kick, okay? Additionally, right, you always wanna think about being offensive, right? So even if I do my cross step, for example, right? And I come in, okay? Maybe I recover coming down and attacking, right? Maybe that's how I recover in my kicks, okay? It's just by stepping down and continuing my offense, okay? So um, again, just want you to focus on how you're gonna recover and stay offensive, stay on the attack until your opponent is no longer a threat, okay? So keep those aspects um, in mind. So those are your basic um, mechanics of the kick, okay? And then the last thing here is just your different target areas, right? Like where am I targeting with the different kicks, right? Frankly, with the front kicks and the straight kicks, you know, side, uh, back, up, down, whatever it is, right? You're targeting anywhere on the body, okay? So I can throw the straight kick um, immediately going low, right? I can actually do it low to the foot, okay? And this is going downward, right? This downward motion. So this is the down um, straight kick, okay? And that can be stepping on the foot. Or if my opponent happens to be already on the ground, right? It can be a foot stomp, right? I can be stomping my opponent, right? Now, obviously, if you're stomping a grounded opponent, you have to be able to justify that from a self-defense aspect, right? In terms of why you're you're stepping or stomping on a grounded opponent, okay? But that is one way in which you can throw your kicks is coming directly down on, um, on your opponent, right? And then of course, working my way up, obviously I always like to go towards the knee, come attacking just straight here towards the knee and then coming up here to the body and even up to the face or to the head, right? So there's so many different target areas you can use with these um, with the straight kicks, okay? Now, going back to sort of the beginning here, right? We talked about this four, uh, these four directions, okay? And this is pretty simple. Now that you understand the framework of what we're talking about, okay? And the different foot angles and the, you know, the, the striking uh, surfaces and everything like that, you also will understand that you got these four directions. This is based off of our asili, right? This is based off of the seed, the root, the essence of what we do in Ijikati. So the only difference between, I covered this previously in other lessons, but the only difference with the straight kick that goes to the front and say a side kick or a back kick, right, is how I turn my standing foot, right? So if I've got my nice straight kick going to the front here, as soon as I turn my, my standing foot to the side, to my left, that naturally wants to turn 
my kicking foot right into a side kick, okay? And all I did was turn my standing foot here, okay? And now it's a side kick, okay? Now, obviously, I can still point my toe center like it is now. I can point it to the right where it comes up, and I can point it to the left where it comes down, okay? But it's the same kick. It's still a straight kick, right? All I did was rotate my foot, and that rotates the hips into this kick, okay? Now, alternatively, right, additionally to the side, the same thing applies with the back kick, right? So kicking forward, right? So we've got the front kick going to the front. We talked about the side, but then I turn all the way, right? Now this is the back kick, right? So now I'm kicking directly behind myself, okay? And I can also turn and look right in the direction that I'm kicking, okay? So this is your back kick, right? So uh, you can work those different things, work your balance, okay? That does take a lot of balance to do that, kicking in those uh, different directions. Give it a shot sometime and see how that works. I want you to be able to control your kicks, okay? Because if you can't do your kicks slow, then doing them fast, you may be able to do them fast, but you need to be able to do them slow to be able to keep your control and to uh, execute the most power in your kicks, okay? Um, but those are the three, the top three here, that are really just based off of how you turn your standing foot, which is based off of our Sealy, that inner circle, okay? Just rotating and turning our striking tools will uh, change the nature of the kick uh, or the punch, the knock, whatever it is that we're doing, okay? Um, and then lastly, right, like we just talked about going down, right? And just, that's just stomping, right? Just like with your kicks going forward uh, to the side, going back, I want you to keep a slight bend in the knee as possible, okay? Now, obviously, when you're kicking down and you're stomping, your foot will have to come up in order to come back down, okay? That's different than your kicks um, going forward, which I don't want you to bring them back and then forward. A lot of martial artists will do this. They'll bring their kick back in order to go forward. I just want you to go forward, okay? Just go forward. That's going to make it much faster, okay? So when you're, uh, step, when you're stomping, okay, again, you want to keep your movements nice and short, okay? You don't need to come super high. This gives your opponent time to escape, time to get away, time to get out, time to counter, and all those kind of things, right? Again, it's all in self-defense, right? So this kind of covers everything uh, for us today, guys. So um, take notes on this. Take photos if you need to. Um, very important to understand kind of how our straight kicks work because uh, we'll be also doing them on the ground as well, okay? So there's more to it, and um, that, uh, that covers the straight kick. All right, guys, so as always, always please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe to my channel, right? We're building African martial arts. We're training. We're teaching, right? We're, we're, this is what we're doing, right? We're really trying to put out a curriculum lesson by lesson, week by week, just helping you grow, helping you learn African martial arts, right? Modern African martial arts, that's really what it's about, um, spreading our culture, right, historically, um, you know, our values, right? And so this is what we're trying to transmit, um, and martial arts is our vehicle for doing that, okay? So tell your friends, share this video, um, and I really appreciate your support um, as we continue to grow. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.